message comes from Matthew, verse tw chapter 22, verse 1 to 14. Matthew 22, verse 1 to 14. Let's do a response reading. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. Go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you can find anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, both good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. Then the king told his attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. Amen. Now let's pray together that as we listen to God's word, we can receive it into our hearts and we have faith to obey them. Pray for the senior overseer who is delivering the word that he will be anointed in his lips by the Holy Spirit, that he may have the wisdom and the knowledge and the power to preach the word that we'll pray out loud together. Father, we have been sanctified by the precious blood of the Lord, and you have called us righteous to become children of God, and now we have come to church at your calling. God, you blessed this holy day. Let them all be blessed on this day. Anoint your servant's lips. Grant him the wisdom, the knowledge, and the power to deliver the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Be chosen. Let us all read the sermon outline together. God is the ruler. He is the Lord of all creations, the King who governs man's life and death. God called us to give us life and blessing. Whoever ignores God's will and follows his own ways will be without hope. For he does not have the holy gift of heaven. God's word is a commandment, the power that sanctifies. The law was given to guide man to Jesus Christ. God gave us Jesus so that we might have faith. 
He gave us the Paraclete Holy Spirit in order to seal us. Hence, the one who has been sealed is the Chosen, and the Chosen is the Man of Heaven. Those who have the seal of the Holy Spirit belong to the Holy Spirit. They are the Lord's. The man of the Lord must put on the Lord Jesus. He must put on the wedding garment of heaven. Grace does not mean we are pardoned infinitely. It means we are sanctified without our own merits and abide within the love of God. Let us be chosen. Let us put on the Lord Jesus and become his beloved ones. Amen. God is the one who created heaven and earth and who rules, governs over all of them. All things were created according to His will. They were created by God and God uses what is His as He is pleased. He is the King of all. So it is for His righteousness, for Himself, that God created all these things. Everything must exist for God's righteousness and they must be used according to God's will. They cannot disobey what God does. Nobody can oppose what He does. We believe in God. We, a lot of us claim to believe in God, but do not understand God, do not know God. They don't, some of us don't even know who God is. If we do know God, then we will know that we belong to God. Because we belong to God, we cannot act on our own accord. We can act only according to God's will. If we don't follow God's will, we will be forsaken. We can only be cast out by God. This is what we have to keep in mind. Those who don't know God are already destined to perish. So it is destined for man to die once and after that to face judgment judgment and then receive punishment. None of us are righteous. We are full of carnal desires and unrighteousness. There is not one person who doesn't have an experience of sin. There is not one person who doesn't have the nature to sin, who doesn't have the heart to sin. There is not one person who has a life without sin. Everyone is far from God. And this is because they don't know God. But after we come to know God, after we came to know God, what do we have to do? What are we supposed to do? And what must we do? How are we supposed to carry ourselves? we would come to understand. They say that man's lifespan is 100 years these days, but that's not something we should be happy about. We have to remember that we will still die, that after that, after we die, we don't have our own will anymore. It's only while we are in the flesh that we can do things according to our will. But once we leave our flesh, once our flesh dies, we can't do anything according to our own will. The one destined to perish will perish, and the one who will receive eternal life will enter eternal life. That's why it's important whose governing, whose rule we are under right now. We have to understand this while we are on the earth. When you make a dough, 
You can make noodles out of the dough or bread out of the dough. We also see in this hymn we sing, God mold me like clay and form your image out of me. We have to let him mold us the way he wants. People talk about their destiny or their fate and your fate, people People talk about fate according to your birth date. They say you are unlucky because you were born on the wrong date. They think that that's your destiny. Since I was little, I heard that kind of, that, that those sort of stories from a lot of people. They said, don't even think of doing something you can't do. Don't even try. I only heard these negative words from people. And I wondered, is that really true? Because people could see no way of escape. But after I came to know Jesus Christ, I discovered an amazing truth. I, no, I am not mine. I realized that. I'm not mine. I belong to God. In Psalm 100, and, uh, Psalm 100 verse 3, God is the one who made us. We are His. God is our maker. We are His. And He can do as He pleases with us. So Jesus said, I am the way. It's not that you don't have a way. It's not that you don't have a way to make a living or a way to succeed or a way to work or a way to anything. It's not that you don't have a way. It's because you ignore the word of God. You ignore the fact that God, Jesus is the Son of God. You don't believe. And therefore, you don't believe in the words of Jesus. What did Jesus say? I am the way. I am the way. I do not take this as a doctrine, but I regard this as a as my as the direction of my life. Jesus said, I am the way. No person, no other person can become the way. Sometimes we might feel frustrated and we might seek counseling and other kind of support, but no other human being can become our way. Jesus said, I am the way. Come to me, ask me, rely on me, listen to my words, do as I tell you. That's the way. And that way is very rough. I surely believe so, and I have followed this way. And that way is very difficult. It is very difficult. When it was so difficult in this world, you might be able to make excuse of it, but or even lie about it. But after I became the man of Jesus Christ and chose the way, that is him, I must just follow that way, nothing else. Though there are persecutions and hardship and trouble, although this is what I have gone through for the past 50 years, and it might seem like a story of long ago, but it was very difficult. When your name is being trampled, it is the worst pain and suffering, more than any physical suffering you can experience. But I know that if I go off this way, if I stray from this way, I know that I'll fall off a cliff, I will be in a pit. I know that only this way is the way. It's narrow and it's, it's rough, but this is the only way. Jesus is a man. He is a man like everybody else in this world. However, he received God's revelation and he did as God told him. He followed and obeyed on according to that way. Even if it is the Son of God, 
How difficult was it to follow that way? How difficult was it? Even his relatives did not support him, did not acknowledge what he did. He was despised in his own hometown, persecuted, and he was accused falsely and finally died on the cross, even if he is the Son of God. If you can you just imagine man going through that pain, but it was Jesus who is the man that experienced all this suffering because that is his way, that is the way he must follow. In this world, he did not have any comfort or consolation. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7, it says that while he was in the flesh, he gave up cries and petitions to the one who would save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence and mission. He finally died when everything was over. God raised him from the dead and exalted him to the highest, seated him on the throne. Then Jesus said, I am the way. In the same way, if you believe in God, then I am the way to follow. You must follow me. It's not easy believing in Jesus. As I said to you before, to believe in Jesus, you cannot make any excuse, you cannot lie. Even if you feel wrongfully accused, you still have to follow without a word. For yourself to live, it's for yourself to have life. We have to follow that way no matter what. So in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, it says, we, we go through the way that Jesus Christ has opened through His blood. That's the way we go. The Lord Jesus shed His blood and opened the way, and that's the way we follow. This is our faith. So let us not be shaken of the way of our faith, but firmly hold on to it. Let's be steadfast in our faith. Let us not follow the habit of those who do not meet together. As we see the day drawing near, let us be eager to meet together. After you receive the knowledge of the truth, if you sin willfully, there is no more sacrifices for sin but a fearful expectation of judgment. This is a warning against us. Jesus is the way for us. Let rely on Him truly. Do not, do not believe this as a doctrine. If you believe this as a doctrine, it will be useless to you. This is life. This is not a doctrine. This is the truth. This is truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way means I am the truth, meaning... There is no other way. There is no other possible method. There is no second way. I am the way, the truth. This is life. This is the way you can live. This is a way for you to live forever. This is a way for your children to have eternal life, for your family to live. So I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Nobody can come to the Father except through me. Everybody wants to be happy. Every, and everybody believes that God is the one who gives us happiness. But if I, if we go off this way, there is no way that we can come to the Father. If you go apart from this truth, if you go, if you stray from this truth and seek the doct a doctrine or some other way, you will not be able to come to God. In Proverbs chapter one verse seven, it says, "Knowing God, the knowledge of God is the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of knowledge." We have to know God. Animals don't have knowledge, but human beings have knowledge. Now, what is this beginning of knowledge? We have to know God. No matter how well you studied, how much you studied in this world, if you don't know God, you are ignorant. You are in ignorance. You cannot save yourself. You are not able to have life. You won't be able to find the way. You will only wander and be lost. 
To know God is the beginning of knowledge. As you listen to the sermon today, please be determined in your heart. Truly, the only way is Jesus. Jesus is the only way. He is the way. Rely on Jesus. He is the way. My, I was supposed to die, but I trust myself to Him. I cling on to Him with all my life. I rely on Him with all that I am, and therefore I come before God, and I will receive the blessing and life and glory that God gives. Only through this way, only through Jesus. Be determined like that. I'm not saying let's learn a doctrine. We have to stand and follow this way to have life. God didn't give us doctrines. He gave us life. He gave us life. We have to obtain this life. And God is the one who governs all this. The man of God is under God's governing. But if you don't belong to God, God will put that person aside. He will just cast that person aside. So a farmer plants crops. Now as the crops grow, the grains ripen, but it doesn't stop there. It has to be, it has to be taken to the threshing floor. And there, the farmer separates the wheat from the chaff. The wheat is taken into the barn. The chaff is thrown into the fire, the fire that never gets quenched. So John the Baptist cried out, Believe in the one who comes after me. He is coming with a winnowing fork in his hand and he will separate the wheat from the chaff. He warned us. But people take this as a doctrine and therefore ignore him. This is not a doctrine, this is life. It's our choice. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 30, I call heaven and earth and have placed life and death, blessings and curses before you. Now for you and your children to live, choose life and blessing. There is life, blessings, death and curses before us. In this world, there is life, there is blessing, there are curses, there is death as well. But for you and your children to live, choose life and blessings. Our faith life does not involve just myself, just me. It's you and your children. You and your children will be blessed. We are a root. If the root is rotten, the tree and the branches cannot grow. If I fail, my children will fail. I have to succeed for my children to succeed. Making money is not success. Receiving love from God, being acknowledged by God. We need to have Him deliver us, f deliver us from the death, deliver us from failure. Only God can do that. So for you and your children to live, listen to God's voice. Listen to God's word. He even says to the sick in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, you have all kinds of various diseases. I am the God who heals. You must listen to my words and keep my commands and I will heal you. So listen to my words. Depend on me. Rely on me fully. He's not saying accept a doctrine or believe in a doctrine. We have to believe in God, receive life. He is our ruler. He gave us the law. What are we before the law? We are sinners. We are sinners to be punished. We are sinners worthy to be cursed and punished. So with the confession, I am a sinner, we kneel down before Jesus. That's the law. That's what the law does. Now, what did Jesus give us? Jesus gave us the right to become children of God.
He formed an everlasting relationship with God between us. And Jesus came as a mediator to give us faith so that we can have an everlasting relationship with God. Why did He give us the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit seals us. When we come to church, we are not sitting here to offer our devotion. We receive the Lord's calling. We repented that we are sinners. We obtained faith. We received the Holy Spirit and have been sealed. And thus we are held in His hands. So we must belong to Him. Let's hold our hands tightly together and say, honestly, don't have, don't believe in the doctrine. Have faith. Oh my soul, you belong to the Lord. Oh my soul, you belong to the Lord. Cry out sincerely. I stand in front of a mirror whenever I wear a necktie. And I confess this. I belong to the Lord. Where am I going wearing this necktie? Where am I going? What am I going to do with this? I belong to the Lord. The Bible says, when you wear sandals, go and preach the gospel. Don't even wear shoes if you're not going to preach the gospel. So how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel? How beautiful are they? I belong to the Lord. And so say together, Oh my soul, you belong to the Lord. Sincerely, awaken your own soul. Oh my soul, you belong to the Lord. Oh my soul, you belong to the Lord. Oh my soul, you belong to the Lord. So you have your duties or appointments in the church. They are all for the Lord. Since now I belong to the Lord, I must serve the Lord. You have to acknowledge that. If you believe in a doctrine, then you will just be a religious person and nothing more. God didn't give us a doctrine. He gave us life. He gave us His Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to save us. The passage in Matthew 22 is when Jesus was speaking about heaven. The kingdom of heaven is like a wedding banquet. The wedding is probably the most beautiful and glorious moment in everyone's lives. There was a lady who was about 70 years old and she said she never wore a wedding dress and so her grandchildren, her son and daughter, her grandchildren decided to put on a dress. I mean, she gained weight with her age and, you know, she's very wrinkly and old. She never wore makeup and on that day she, she was put on so much makeup that it looks like she had flour, you know, spread all over her face. Then they she put red lipstick on her lips and actually to be honest she looked like a member of the circus but anyway but she was so happy and at the back because because of her weight the dress didn't fit very well but still she was so happy to be in a dress you know you wonder what does it mean to be in a dress so she says she never got to wear it and it always it always you know disappointed her she had she was a very married she had children and even many grandchildren but it might seem like nothing but this wedding ceremony is probably the greatest glory anyone can have in their life. So in the olden days in Korea, when they got married, the groom was given garment that is wo that is only worn by kings, and the bride is worn. The bride gets given a garment that only the queen can wear. So it is only that day that they receive this glory as a king and queen. And this is what Jesus is speaking about. The kingdom of heaven is like a wedding banquet. And 
The king invited many people to the banquet. And here, Jesus is speaking of the Israelites and the Gentiles. The ones who have been invited were Israel. They were first invited. When they were called, they had excuses saying, I'm too busy, you know, that I have, uh, I have killed a fattened calf and I have prepared a great feast. But people were saying, I'm busy. They had so many excuses. I have to go and test out my oxen. I have to go into my field. They had so many excuses. Same thing with today's people. They have so many excuses. Oh, my, my father doesn't believe. My parents disagree. My wife doesn't want to come. They have so many excuses. And in the end, they don't come to the wedding banquet. The king was enraged and told his servants to bring the people who were not invited at first because Israel was hardened in their hearts God turned his hearts to the Israelites uh, to the Gentiles he went to the Gentiles and told them to come we were just people walking on the streets but we were invited by the Lord and we came to this wedding banquet. Although we have come, it says we have to wear the wedding garment. No matter how, even though we came because we were told, Jesus, got, he's going to ask, you know, how did you come? Since you have been called by a king, at least you need to have the basic etiquette. If you're in a wedding banquet, you need to have the basic etiquette. And a person wasn't wearing wedding garment, and the king asked, "Why did? Why don't you have a wedding garment? I mean, you're at a wedding. You were invited by a king, and you're not wearing a wedding garment." And he was speechless. Tie him hand and foot. And he was cast out. He was first beaten and then cast out, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. There were so many Israelites, but if you read Revelations, the number of people sealed are only 144,000. So God turned to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles are as numerous, are countless, like the clouds. Today, what is a church? We've learned that before, Ecclesia, it means invited by God, people invited by God. So, you and I have become members of the church because we have been invited by the Lord. We have been invited. Now we have to be chosen. There are many people in this world. There are many people that filled this world, but God chose just one man, Adam. Adam had many descendants, and after that, God chose Abraham. Be chosen by God. To David, God said, I, I see David, the son of Jesse, is after my heart. There were many young people at that time, but God's heart was with David, and he chose him. So be chosen. James is a uh, sorry, Jacob is a twin with his brother Esau. They were not born like a minute apart from each other, but Jacob held the ankle of Esau. So when Esau was born, he was he held Esau's ankle. So they came out at the same time, literally. Even so, God chose Jacob because from within the womb, God watched them. He didn't see Jacob after he was born. God saw him while he was in the womb. To Rebecca, he said, there are two nations at war inside you. There's the lesser will be greater and the elder son will serve the younger. There was already 
this battle within the womb. Now, when he was born into this world, Jacob was very timid and he was very feminine, unlike his older brother. And he was not able to go out often. He was very soft in heart. But still, he envied his brother. He envied his brother's blessing. And so he gave a bowl of soup and bore the birthright. He was scared when he, go, when he went to the father that the father might recognize that he is, he is a second son and because now his mother told him if your father curses you then I will take the curse so you receive all the blessing. And Jacob just trusted his mother's words and went in and received his father's blessings. He cried out to God to bless him and he, was, he prayed until his bone got disjointed and that's how he obtained God's blessing. So God saw his zeal from the womb and chose him. Today, do you have? are you worthy to be chosen by God? Do you have that struggle? Are you struggling to be chosen by God? Are you longing? Do you have longing? Do you have yearning? Are you fighting against your flesh to overcome? Are you trying to fight against your desires? Do you have that earnest desire in your spirit? People just relax, holding on to a doctrine. They, they think, I just need to believe according to a doctrine. They don't have that love for God. When you get over, when you go past adolescence, you know what love is like. What is love? Why are there troubles in family? Why is there discord in family? People want to own that person to themselves. That's why. And God wants to do the same. When we love God, we also need to have the desire to have God to ourselves. Do you have that desire, that yearning? Do we have that fervent love for God? We should be jealous to the point that we cannot handle. We want to love Him with all that we are. But do you even have that yearning? Do you even have that earnestness? Like Jacob, you need to have that kind of struggle, that kind of earnestness. Many people have been invited like here, but very few are chosen. You have to be chosen. What does the Bible say? Your faith is about being blessed. You and your children being blessed, that you and your children will be blessed to a thousand generation. Faith is not just me. It's not just by myself. Through me, myself and my children must be blessed to a thousand generation. We'll, be, we'll receive God's grace to a thousand generations. Honor your father and mother, then you will be prosperous on the earth and you will enjoy a long life. We are no longer alone. We have parents above us, we have children. Even though I die, there are children of a thousand generations waiting after me. Now, are they going to be cursed for a thousand generations because they can't come into the grace of God and they are cast outside weeping and gnashing their teeth? Or are the thousand generations going to receive His love? Isn't this important? If you haven't been chosen, then your children to a thousand generations is not in God's grace. You have to be chosen, and if you have been chosen, then you and your children will receive grace for a thousand generations. You will, they will be in His love for a thousand generations. Your wife loves God fervently, then you should be grateful for that. If your husband loves God fervently, then you should be grateful for that. If your children fervently loves God more than anything else in the world, you should be joyful. But people say, oh, that, that my daughter doesn't want to study. And people just get upset with that. They think loving the Lord is not important and that it's not as important as other things. So how can that family be blessed? We have to be chosen. We have to be the chosen ones. Be chosen. 
be chosen by God. And the Holy Spirit has to seal this, has to guarantee this. What does it say in the Bible? He called his disciples, but he didn't call anyone. He didn't call everyone that said, pick me, pick me. He chose those he wanted, and they came to him. He chose those that he wanted. He said in Mark chapter 3, verse Verse 10, he chose the ones that he wanted. They were not educated. They didn't study. They didn't graduate from college. But they had such a yearning in their heart. That's why God chose them. Our prayer is your spirit struggling against your flesh. What is fasting and prayer? It's your spirit struggling. It is a struggle against yourself to deny yourself, to overcome yourself. That's what fasting and praying is about. If you can't overcome yourself, how can that be fasting and praying? That's just starving. If you can't overcome yourself, that's just starvation. What is our faith about? It's about struggling against yourself and overcoming. We have to overcome our flesh and we have to overcome the world and we have to come before God. That We have to follow this way. Jesus said, Whoever comes to me must deny himself. They must be hated by the world. They have to forsake everything, even their life. It's very difficult. But to live, we have to do so. As the Lord said, many have been invited, but few are chosen. We have been invited and we came to church. We are in the church because we were invited by God. However, we really have to be chosen by God. After I got married, at that time, they, they didn't let men and women associate together or meet together. They had this rule. So even in town, you couldn't see women or women couldn't see men. They were divided. And so when they get married, you know, how desperate would you want to be with your wife and your husband? But when I got married, I, because I had a, such a difficult life, I was in a pit. So right after the wedding, I went to the mountains and prayed for 40 days. And I prayed, if I have children, what would I what can I do? I don't have I don't have the confidence to raise him. So 40 days I prayed and 40 days later I came down and met my wife. Now, when my wife was pregnant, I put my hand on the belly every single day and prayed. I prayed every single day. I just prayed and blessed the baby. Let this child truly be blessed because if God does not bless him, he can do nothing. You and your children will be blessed. You and your children will be blessed. This is the only way that I could win, that I can overcome. If you do not follow the way that you led your life in this world up until now, follow the way of God from this moment. He gave us Jesus. Jesus is the way. There is no other way. There is no other method. Be chosen by God. I will follow the way of Jesus. So God choose me. So God choose me. Earnestly, let's all say it together, Lord, choose me. Say it louder three times. Lord, choose me. Lord, choose me. Lord, choose me. Let him have his ears open to you. He has everything prepared. He wants you to come to him and, and seek his counsel, seek his help. Not people's, his. He wants you to come upon this way. 
struggle with all your life. Just like the labor of birth, He wants you to follow that way alone. So everybody stand. Pray that you and your family will be chosen by God in this hour. Pray that you will all be chosen by God earnestly with all of your might. Pray. Just as Jacob, while he was in the womb, he was struggling against his brother. Right now, let your prayer, let your earnest prayer be delivered to God so that your soul, so that God can see that you are struggling in your soul. Let's all pray together. Pray, Lord, choose me. Lord, choose me. Pray louder, earnestly. Cry out to God. Cry out louder. Pray to God. Hananimo,我们的宝石,我们的宝石,我们的宝石,我们的宝石,我们的宝石,我们的宝石,我们的宝石,我们的宝石,我们的宝石,我们的宝石,我们的宝石,我们的宝石,我们的宝石,我们的